the first thing you notice is, whoa, it's an entirely different system. Right. Just, ooh, voodoo or something. It stands alone in terms of technology and performance. You know, there's nothing out there right now that, that is comparable. Hi, I'm Hannah from Singletrack, and I'm here with Alex from SRAM to talk about the new Axis range of products which are being launched today. So, Axis is A-X-S, isn't it? You That's see it written correct. down. Um, and um, so what is it? What's in the Axis range? It's a good question. So, uh, yeah, Access, SRAM Access and RockShox Access is our new wireless electronic components for, for the mountain bike. Right. So you might have seen, you know, for, for, for a few years actually, we've had Red ETAP, which yep. has been our electronic road system, you know, fully wireless. So we're now introducing that finally to, to the mountain bike. So in terms of what we've got here, you have Eagle Access and right. Reverb Access, and they are our main two, two product groups for the MTB side. Um, so Eagle Access building on what people are familiar with now as yeah. SRAM Eagle drivetrain, um, one by drivetrain system, but truly putting a fully wireless integrated system with a controller and a derailleur, no kind of connected cables or all that kind of yeah. good stuff. So yeah, so there's nothing between here and over there, is there? It's just, just ooh, voodoo or something voodoo. that goes between the two. <laughs> Most, mostly voodoo, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, you're right. There's no, you know, there's no cables, there's no kind of wrapping, there's nothing going through the bike or anything. It is purely a, a derailleur system and a controller up here and they communicate with each other via Bluetooth and plus ETAP signals. So right. three combinations. And you know, access in itself is the the name, the, the umbrella that all of these products live under in mm -hmm. terms of how they communicate with each other from an electronic product and a software integration. So yep. you can, you know, get them to, to do what they need to do. Uh, and reverb as well falls underneath that. So you know reverb access, you have a controller on this side of the bike. And the reverb itself, so again, no, no hoses, no cables, no wires. It literally just communicates from that controller with this uh, you know, motor, gearbox yep. and battery system up here to control reverb electronically. Okay, so it's quite nice to imagine all the other things that might, might appear in the future, which you're definitely not going <laughs> to tell me about. The aim here with wireless shifting and wireless reverb is basically to, you know, to build a better bike it's to build a system that is more um you know it's more intuitive it's easier to use it's more user friendly mm -hmm. you stick it on the bike and you and you get the perfect shift every time don't you well that's the aim of it yeah, yeah. you know like shifting shifting a mechanical part on a bike a mechanical drivetrain isn't overly difficult and it mm -hmm. doesn't take a huge amount of force but it does require human input you've got to pull a cable the right amount you've got to throw the levers just enough that it changes up on a gear mm -hmm. you do it kind of at the right time and with the right sort of pace in your legs now we all do that as mountain bikers and it's not I'm not trying to pretend it's rocket science here and we've you know built an arc to sail everyone away on <laughs> it's very much like it's just it's an improved system it's the next level of what bicycle components can be to make a a better bike ultimately yeah. so, so so really this is going to appeal to the racers isn't it because they're gonna they're going to be able to focus on racing and getting the perfect shift every time taking the perfect line and they're not having to spend any time thinking about how much their thumb is moving but there's going to be a whole bunch of people who are going to want the best best technology that a bike can have and that they will be the ones that will also buy this is it for just a type of person Yes, we've been racing this. Nino Schurd has been racing this for nearly a year now, and right. he won the World Cup on it. He's won the World Champs on it this year okay. again. Which, you know, which is which is phenomenal. But is it just for racers? So no, it's for it's for everyone that really wants to build the best possible bike you can right. build. And in terms of bike building and bike design, because you haven't got any cables in there, there's some potential for for kind of interesting new bike builds as well, new frame builds potentially, isn't there? Because you haven't got to get mm. a cable line through the suspension, through the swing arm. But, but yeah, you're right. Getting a getting a, a shifter cable through a frame or alongside of a frame and into the rear triangle of a bike and through this part can have or does have an impact on how you build a bike and where that cable goes. And actually does have an impact as well on the suspension performance of the bike. If you take away that complexity and need to route a cable and go through here and go around there, and you had two components to the bike that ultimately deliver that function of, mm. you know, flawless shifting, um, but without having that added complexity. Yeah, it make, it's, a, it's, a, it's another step forward, I think, in what bikes are. One by really open that envelope, this, and created better bikes. This, again, is, an, is another step in that mm. direction. Of 
In terms of the the sort of the functionality of of this with the app, I believe you can alter um, what a button does in terms of like whether you get one one step or three steps and that kind of thing. Is that right? Now, I guess it's the first key thing. It's got to be worth saying is actually you can. You can run access on a bike and just bolt it on, press a button there, press a button there, link them together, and they are communicating with each other um, via Ant Plus, um, mm -hmm. ETAP, and Bluetooth. And it's a secure kind of, it's a secure communication and it's just going to work. Right. You know, you don't need to pull out an app if you don't want. Um, but if you choose to and you want to get involved in that, you're absolutely right. You've, we've got two component groups here. We've got drivetrain and we've got a seat post. And as you mentioned, Hannah, there's, there's three buttons. You've got inboard shift, outboard shift, and the reverb itself. Yeah. So think of it as just three buttons and you can assign those three buttons to do whichever one you want to do. Right. So as it comes from the factory and how we would spec it, it you know, you would have both your shifting done on your derailleur on controller, yep. like up and down shifting, and then your reverb control done on your reverb controller. But you, if you wanted this, for example, button, if this button you wanted to be your inboard shift and this button then on this side to be your outboard shift that's totally fine and then yeah. you could assign the top button to on there to be your dropper post yeah yeah cool. yeah and you can also as you mentioned you can change you know, how many gears it shifts if i'm just pedaling along and you press and hold one of the buttons mm -hmm. on the derailleur that'll shift the derailleur all the way along yeah or you could just have it shift two gears or three gears again like it's totally up to you you can right. change settings on there for sure cool and then there are two clutches in here, yes? The derailleur itself is, you know, inside of this derailleur, we've got, you know, you've got the battery that you can see at the back mm -hmm. here. So it's all self-contained. There's a motor and there's a gearbox that's going to actuate that movement. In order to protect it, though, we need to make sure that it's going to be durable enough for mountain biking. So it's got to, you know, it's going to take some knocks and tumbles. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, you know, it's going to work under more stressful situations, covered in mud and, and all the rest of it and getting a few wax off rocks. So. There's two types of clutches in there that are going to protect it. One, or well, one clutch that we're all should be familiar with, which is your your derailleur yep. clutch, which um, keeps our, our chain retention, so type three roller yep. bearing clutch. And then the second type of clutch we got in there is what we call the overload clutch. Now that is the clutch that, when this derailleur or if this derailleur was to take a knock uh -huh. and something a big old rock was going to come in from the side and strike it, you know what? The last thing we want is that derailleur to burst into pieces yep. or to, to bend your derail hanger over or to not be functioning properly. So we've built in an electronic clutch system where if you're going to give that a knock, it's going to move over on a yep. clutch and then it's going to come back into its original position again. <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's a little bit of, you've got to build in a bit of protection there for mountain yep. biking. The other thing that um, Eagle Eagle has done here as well, what we've done with XX1 and X01 Eagle derailers um, drivetrain on access is we've We've moved the derailleur slightly a little bit further round this position here. So okay. there's more chain wrap, which gives a more longevity uh, of the drivetrain itself. Mm -hmm. so there's more teeth engaged with the chain. Um, and also the derailleur cage itself is actually a little bit higher. It's about 10 millimeters higher than our right. mechanical Eagle offering. Uh, so there's a, a little bit more clearance as well. Okay. So if you're, you're, in, you're an enduro racer and you hit a massive something here, you're going to it's going to pop straight back into position and then you're going to carry on pedaling and it's going to be exactly indexed where it should be. There's no stopping and faffing and fiddling around, yeah? That's the exact function. It's not necessarily for everyone. You don't need to replace your mechanical drivetrain with mm -hmm. an Eagle Access drivetrain, X01 or XX1, but you are getting a better performing, more intuitive, more higher, higher grade product because yeah. this is ultimately the you know the pinnacle of what we can build well, a lot bikes. of what we buy as bikes though we buy it because we want it we don't need it <laughs> you know we buy it because we want it well we talk quite a lot about the drivetrain let's get the bike down and have a little look at the dropper post and the other cool thing about access and getting rid of all that cables and hoses and and kind of uh web super neat at the front yeah get, yeah you have two hoses now you've got a, a brake hose and a brake hose and the yeah. rest of it's all done electronically wirelessly so um yeah eagle controller on this side and reverb control on this side and yeah that button if you can just about hear that's yep. is actuating the the um the motor and the gearbox inside the seat post here which is allowing you to drop it now this is as it works on radio frequency bluetooth and plus it is as close to instantaneous as mm -hmm. can possibly be yes yeah, so i like noticed it want, was when i rode it around the car yeah. park there's no delay on it at all. you're not going to press a button and go 
Should I go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's instantaneous. You press that button, and that post drops down. Yeah. And it's very spanky on the way up. Go on. Oh. Yeah. So you can sit on it and drop it a couple of centimeters, a few centimeters, wherever you want to do. Um, you know, if you yeah. if you tap that button really fast, you can bring it up halfway. You could bring it all the way to the top. Yeah. Yeah. So I I'm one of those riders that actually does put my saddle down just an inch here and just an inch there quite a lot like a bit of tech climbing yeah yeah, yeah I, 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 I use it a lot for that and I, just riding it around the car park here um i noticed that it, it's actually a lot easier to to get that little adjustment than i found it with yeah. with other dropper posts so yes if you're a fan of that reverb itself there are some key developments here this is this is a new and improved and better reverb all round. yeah um but the, the body of the reverb in in a lot of ways is similar to current reverb stealth Pretty much from, pretty much from the head down to about this point here, the internals are very similar. They're developed. We've got new seals. We've got we're we're using a new IFP that's quieter, that's smoother. Um, new oils and seals and build build okay. um, manufacturing process that's made it even more reliable. Um, but the the new kind of bit on there as well is this part, this head unit of it itself is the battery, the gearbox, and the motor that's actuating that opening the opening the valve basically to allow the reverb to move um, and what's really neat about this as well is that there's a new technology in reverb access called vent valve mm -hmm. if you get air in a place where it's just meant to be oil you can get a little bit it's of squish. little squishy yeah yeah and if you get a little bit of squish to get rid of that what we do what we now do is you take the post out you have a little tool you plug it into the bottom you compress the post and it purges the air out and you get rid right. of that squish straight so away there's like a, a bleed valve effectively exactly, built in yeah vent valve we call it yeah. yeah you know we really believe that this this drivetrain it stands alone in terms of technology and performance you know there's nothing out there right now that that is comparable even mm -hmm. to fully electronic wireless drivetrains for mountain bikes. Somebody is going to want it. Probably quite a few people are going to want it. We hope so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. So uh, this is launched today. It will be available soon as uh, the reverb and then also as a complete group set, won't it? You, uh, you can't buy just the derailleur yet. That will come in, in due course. So if you want this now, mm -hmm. you have to go and buy the whole thing. Well, yeah, in, all its, in, all, in all its rainbow glory. Yeah. Right. Thanks very much for joining us, Alex. And hop on over to singletrackworld.com if you want more information on, on this new Access. Access. Yes. SRAM Access. SRAM yes. RockShox Access. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for joining us.